the coffee's good this morning. I, maybe it's because it's the day after the Resurrection Sunday. We had such a powerful weekend. But there's some bad news, and there's a bad man. I mean, there's a bad, bad man loose right now. we got to get this guy. I'm not John Walsh, but I am a servant of the Lord. And I can sense evil. I can sort out. I can smell out evil from a mile away. And this guy's evil. Let's find him. All right. Let's go right now to... Um, actually, this is a story written by uh, Columbine... Or, excuse me. Oh, I'll get it here. Here we are. Out of Reuters, out of Denver, Colorado. Okay, the FBI on Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, has identified a recently paroled bank robber as the man suspected of planning a bomb at a crowded shopping mall near Columbine High School. Are you serious? Would you really do that? Are you serious? Well... He planted it last week on the 12th anniversary of that horrible school massacre that left 13 high school students dead and the realization to America that guns in the hands of even the youth is becoming a major, major dangerous and catastrophe among the public. We have gang violence, drive-by shootings at alarming rates in this country, but now it's even coming home into the high schools, into the elementary schools here recently, even in our communities. Okay, then Earl Albert Moore is his name. This guy's a character. Why is this guy free? Earl Albert Moore, he's 65. He remains at large. He's considered armed and dangerous, has an extensive criminal background, said the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force uh, in a news release yesterday. He was previously described as a person of interest, but now in the investigation, he is pictured in surveillance cameras images released to the public last week. The FBI said that Earl Albert Moore, Earl Albert Moore, 65, is suspected of placing the pipe bomb near two propane tanks at the Southwest Plaza Mall there near Columbine High School. Uh, this guy, they let him out of jail early. Okay, uh, Moore was paroled from federal prison on, on what? April the 13th after serving time for his conviction in a 2005 robbery of a West Virginia bank, according to the United States Bureau of Prisons. He was originally sentenced to 18 years, but a federal judge cut his sentence to seven years at the... Um, because prosecutors who said Moore had provided them with substantial assistance in investigating or prosecuting another person. So a jailhouse snitch gets eight, after getting 18 years for a bank robbery in West Virginia, because he's a jailhouse snitch, he's able to get it cut to seven, he's released, and he goes straight out and does what? Puts a bomb near Columbine? Are you serious, Albert? Are you serious, Earl Albert Moore? Are you serious? We're going to get you. John Wash is coming. We can't tolerate this kind of stuff. This is just one criminal. I, if I was to go down the list of criminals we need to go get, I would take. it would take me weeks and weeks and weeks of nonstop YouTube videos right here. That's not my purpose. My purpose is to break down the current news. My purpose is to, what's the big story here? That Earl Albert Moore tried to blow up people in Columbine? No, that's not the big story. I mean, it's ironic he does it on the 12th anniversary. But the big story is, why is it so, why is evil stay in one spot? I don't think you know if you understand. The Bible tell, talks about principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. You have to understand the difference between a fallen angel and demon spirits. Even though they're the same, they work in degrees. There's principalities and there is powers. Now look, principality, a principality is a type of demonic authority that takes possession of a city or a community or a state or even a government, an entire nation. It tries to supremely control the leadership of that directed in that area. For instance, Las Vegas, Nevada, is called Sin City, not because there's a lot of gambling and there's uh, some pl 
portions of Nevada has legal prostitution and there's tons of drug trafficking. But this spirit of sin, this okaying the sin, this, this, this thought of what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas is, is an actual, um, this is a cloak, a covering. This is actually a principality that's taking control of the entire city and declaring it its place. You see, in Calcutta, India, and I've been to Calcutta, India, it is a, a city of gigantic, I mean, 19 million people, but there is the sick and the dying all over the place. You can go down certain streets of Calcutta, and the people are laying there dying and death and disease and destruction, and, and there's so much despair and misery. And, and so that's why Mother Teresa was sent there by the hand of God to actually, she would go around picking up the dying from the streets, taking them to her little mission, and healing them back to life with the healing hands of God. She did it without the blessing of the Vatican for a while. It took Rome about 10 years to recognize the movement of the miracles that this young woman was doing, a young uh, uh, nun herself. Sometimes evil sets up residency. You might say, well, what's that got to do with anything? Right down the street, not far from where Mother Teresa set up her makeshift mission, is a temple to the goddess Kali. That's right, the goddess of death. You've seen it with the eight arms and legs. People would actually go into this temple and would worship on the altar to the spirit of death. Call it on death in the name of that goddess is Kali. Kali. That's right, that's the same god that Indiana Jones called out to in his movie, uh, The Temple of Doom. You see, these are demon spirits, principalities who set up residence because they have this temple of death in Calcutta. No wonder there's so many people that are sick and diseased and dying right there on the very streets of that city. Taking up control, blocking out compassion, trying to seal the fate of an entire city and if he can, an entire nation. When Adolf Hitler was, was literally possessed by a principality spirit, he rose from this country of Austria to the ranks of the leadership of the Nazi party and used his demonic powers to completely take control of a nation to kill 7 million Christians and 6 million Jews. Are you saved? Columbine had this shooting. Now, 12 years later, Columbine is still, when we talk of school shootings anywhere in America, we always revert back to Columbine. Now this man gets out of prison for bank robbery early and goes straight out and plants a bomb? Why? Near Columbine? How, why? What, what? Are you serious? Are you serious? Is this man in control or is there some demon spirits lurking in the area and grabbed him and said, you're the one that we can control. You're a follower of Satan anyway. You see, you have to understand there is demon spirits in the world. Can it be stopped, Paul? Absolutely, in the name of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from all sin, but it can do more than just cleanse you from sin and me from sin. It can do more than just heal our bodies when we're sick. By his stripes, we're healed. It is also a protection. The blood of Christ is so much more powerful that Satan's forces cannot penetrate him, almost like an invisible force field. If only the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the body of Christ, the Christians, forget the nominations, would you please? If we would just all as Christians call upon the name of Jesus and use the power of his blood, we can eradicate our communities of those types of principalities. Can we stop all people from sin? No. We are, you know, we're not foolish to think that, but we are responsible as Christians to know you don't let the devil take up possession of your community. Do it now. Pray in the name of Jesus. Declare your block. Declare your town. Declare your village. Declare your city. I double dog dare you to rise up and plead the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Well, this has been a, a teaching maybe if you want to, but I want to say to you now, there's power. There's power. 
There is power in the blood of the Lamb. I'm Paul Begley. I am so serious. And we've got more to talk about today. This is just the start. I'm telling you, I'm wound up. we got to get this stuff done. It's got to happen. I want to hear from you. Send me a private message. If you're not saved and you're tired of the devil controlling your life, send it right now, right here on YouTube. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. We have 151 salvations as we speak. <laughs> it's awesome, including one lady who came all the way from Martinsville, Indiana, drove all the way to Knox, Indiana, to my church, showed up there, and gave her heart to Jesus Christ. We're going to be baptizing her soon. I mean, that's a long way. That's three, three and a half hour drive. But you might want to come to Knox. You might just want to come to Knox and get in on the powerful move of God. I am Paul Begley. Send me a personal message right here on YouTube. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. God bless all of my subscribers. That's another thing I got to tell you. We hit 1,500 subscribers. Are you serious? Are you serious? It took us a year to get to 1,000. It took us two months to get to 1,500. This thing is growing. It's because people want the truth. 